Hi folks, Kate here with Fusion 3 again. Uh, today's video is going to be about burning out anvil printhead tubes. So first, why would you want to do this? Uh, it's possible to recover and reuse jammed anvil tubes. So uh, if you're concerned about cost or you just want to be more efficient, um, this would be a way to take a tube that has been jammed and is not usable and get it back into service. Um, this process is not 100% successful, but its success rate for us is much greater than 50%. This does work for all material types, both unfilled and filled, although fiber-filled materials such as carbon fiber, glass fiber, etc. are going to have a slightly lower success rate. Before we get into the actual how-to, let's talk about some safety things. Um, this is not a super safe process. Only do this if you are 100% comfortable using a blowtorch and manipulating extremely hot objects. We're going to be using a propane blowtorch to heat up the printhead tube to, to the point where it glows bright orange. So you need to be comfortable doing this. Uh, you need to be in a place where this is safe to do. So that would be over an impermeable, non-flammable surface such as concrete and outside. Please do not do this indoors. Uh, there's a risk of burns and there's a risk of starting a fire if this is not done carefully. There's also a risk of ruining the anvil tube if this is done improperly. So with those things said, uh, let's get into it. Right, so you're going to need a few tools to successfully burn your uh, anvil printhead tubes out. So first thing, I've got my clog tube here. You're going to need a pair of pliers. You can use slipshaw pliers like this or you can use needle nose. You can see from the tarnish marks or the burn marks. I've already done this with these. You're going to need a spray bottle full of water and then lastly you're going to need a blowtorch. Um, you are going to need an actual blowtorch for this. You cannot get um, you cannot get hot enough with a like cigarette lighter or a smaller torch. You need something you know that looks basically like this. So the theory of what we're going to do here is we are going to this tube, for the sake of example, let's say this tube has been clogged, so we've got filament built up. We don't know where, but it could be the whole length. So what we're going to do, if I can get the camera to focus, we're essentially going to heat the tube up until it glows orange to burn out any material in it, any contaminants, anything like that, that may be present in the tube. Um, there's a few wrinkles here. These are stainless, so it is safe to get them hot enough that they glow orange. However, when you do that, you need to be careful that you don't inadvertently uh, crush them with the pliers and change the geometry up here. Because if you if you if you bring it if you make it non-circular, you've ruined your ability to transfer heat out of it on the cold side. So usually this is a two-stage process. Usually we're going to hold it up top, burn out the bottom half or bottom two thirds, and then we're going to move the pliers down and we're going to burn out the top. And then we're going to take our water. We're going to use the water for two things. One is we're going to cool this down so that it's safe to touch in a reasonable time frame. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to use the water to blow the debris out of the tube. So let's get started. Now, I am doing this with the lights off indoors because I need the contrast so you can see the flame and you can see how hot the tube gets. Um, you should not do this indoors. Please do this outside over a non-flammable surface such as concrete or pavement. Uh, don't do this indoors. We've set off smoke alarms before uh, and I hope that doesn't happen today. But, you know, for the sake of the... For uh, what's, what's the phrase in Hollywood? The show must go on. So, anyway, I've got my torch. I've got my tube held. A little closer to the end here. Okay. Hold it. You notice where I'm holding that in the flame. I'm not right up against it. I'm about an inch out because you don't want, you want to control the heating. This is not an uncontrolled thing. We're trying to control the amount we heat up the tube because we don't want to obviously melt it. That would be bad. That flame coming out of the end is normal. What we're doing is we're combusting stuff that's in the tube. So that's pretty normal at this stage. And you notice I'm panning back and forth to evenly heat the section I can get to. And this is where you'll start to see the tube starts to start to glow. That's about as bright as you want them to get. Any more than that, you're running the risk of starting to melt them. So I'm going to do a little bit more towards the top here. Okay. 
Now, I'm reasonably sure, sure there's nothing left in that tube. Or at least nothing flammable. We might have some carbon build up. Okay. Next phase. I'm going to cool it down. I'm also going to cool down the pliers because I may need to touch them for this next phase. Okay. Once the water starts stops evaporating, you know, explosively, it's probably safe to manipulate. So to do that, I don't want to touch it with my hand because it may still be hot. So normally I'm just going to bang it on a desk, but I'm trying to keep this in camera. So I'm just going to slide my pliers down and hold it right there. And then we're going to repeat this process. Again, once the glow is gone, don't immediately hit it with water. If it's glowing bright orange, it's probably not good for it. Okay, so now it's cool enough. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, once I'm really sure it's cool, because I've melted the tips of water bottles before, you're going to place it over the tip of the water bottle, and you're going to try to jet water through it. So I think you can see that on camera, I'm getting a nice clean stream of water coming out of the tip of the printhead, or the tip of the tube. That tells me that tube is clear. That's what you want to see. If you don't see that, that means you still have to, excuse me, that means you still have debris in the tube. And that means you need to, you may want to try to burn it out again, you may want to try to flush it more, you may want to try to reverse flush it, um, but that means the tube is not okay. The final thing I'm going to do, once I'm sure it's safe to touch, is I'm going to hold that up to my eye, and I'm going to sight down it. Uh, it's going to be a little bit hard to do on camera here. Yeah, this is, oh, there it was. You can actually see daylight. That's what you want to see. Now, full disclosure, this is a 0.8 millimeter, which is a little bit easier to get clean than uh, the 0.4 and 0.6s. The same basic process applies. All right, one final step we're going to do is we're going to clean the outside of the tube. Now, this one is not so bad. Focus. You can see I have a little bit of discoloration, but there's no heavy carbon buildup. So this is something you're, that you, you really want to do if you see any heavy, heavy carbon buildup on the, particularly the hot side of the tube. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to chuck this into a drill. Now, you have to be very gentle because we're actually only going to make contact on the, the flare at the top. And we don't want to crush that. But the good thing is we don't actually need that much uh, clamping force to do this. So you're just going to... Stick it in about that far and gently clamp it and try to keep it somewhat straight. Let's see how I did. Yeah, that's good enough. We'll fix it in a second. You're going to take a piece of 400 to 800 grit sandpaper. This is 400, but it's pretty well worn, so it's more like 600. Uh, let's see. I have to figure out how to keep this on camera. Okay, so you're going to wrap it around the tube like so, and you're just going to grip it gently, and then you're just going to spin it. And again, the key is we're not removing material here, we're just polishing off that, um, that debris. And you can see that cleans the tube right up. So again, keep in mind that the objective here is not to get it looking pretty. The objective, is, the objective is to remove any carbon buildup that might potentially interfere with our ability to clamp tightly on the tube and transfer heat in or out of it. Because remember, in the anvil printhead design, our heat transfer between the machine sections and the tube is all in that clamping interface. So anything that interferes with how tightly and how um, smoothly we're able to clamp will reduce our heat transfer, which reduces the effectiveness of the printhead. That's pretty much all there is to it. Now, I won't say this tube is as good as new. Um, this does not have a 100% success rate, particularly with materials that have uh, carbon fiber or glass fiber in them, your success rate's probably gonna be a little bit lower. Um, but once you have the tools on hand to do it, and if you deal through it a couple times, it's very, it's very quick, it's very low effort. Um, so it's always worth trying to recover a jam tube by doing this um, and see if you can get it, see if you can reuse it.